Hi, it's Thomas here. Improvising plays a big role in next level playing. And although I haven't shared much improvising on the channel recently, it's actually one of my favorite aspects of the course. In today's video, I'll give you an update on my improvising journey. And this video is heavily inspired by the improvising lesson in level four of next level playing. <laughs> If we were to go back in time, improvising for me meant putting on a backing track and playing the minor pentatonic scale. I don't have any audio or video material of this right now, maybe for the better, but it was likely not going anywhere, going up the scale here and going down there, not really thinking or listening much to what I was actually playing. I feel I only started to get more comfortable with the idea of improvising after doing Justin Guitar's course Major Scale Maestro, which obviously is focused on the major scale. Major Scale Maestro made me think about what I was playing, but it also made me listen to the backing track and made me listen to myself, and more importantly, to listen how these two things sound together. Next Level Playing teaches improvising using the major scale first, which is followed by the minor pentatonic scale. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned how Next Level Playing helped me to connect the chord shapes and the pentatonic scale shapes. At that time, I really focused on the importance of the root note. How it could help to give direction to your improvising, for example by starting or ending on it. Now the exercise in this stage is a bit different. While you are first improvising on a chord progression, now you are improvising on just one chord. And you are playing this chord. There is no backing track. What this means is that you strum the chord, then fill the rest of the bar with a short an improvised lick and then be in time for the next chord strum. The course suggests to use the pentatonic scale which is always a good starting point. The consequence of this way of playing is that your time is limited. You only have a few counts to fill the space. Because you play the chord and there is no backing track you can't stop playing. But it also helps to keep things short and simple. I also decided it would be a good idea to be able to improvise on all kinds of different chords. Such as uh, a six string uh, E shape major or minor bar chord or a 5 string A major or minor shape bar chord. The reason for this is that all these different chord shapes also have a different related pentatonic scale pattern. So you learn to improvise using different patterns of both the major and the minor pentatonic scale. During my sessions I was also experimenting how I can make my playing more interesting. For example using pull-offs to open strings or playing triad shapes or just using the major or the minor, natural minor scale um, as additional notes to the pentatonic scale pattern. Some of these turned out well, others maybe not so much. I guess there is a place for all of these techniques at some point, but also that some of these techniques maybe won't work that well with a certain pattern or chord, or I'm just not at the skill level yet to uh, pull it off really. When I started improvising, I didn't pay attention to anything. I just played this minor pentatonic scale up and down, hoping that maybe some interesting things would be happening. And when I was improvising previously in next level playing, I was mainly focusing on the root note. But now I took it a step further. When I played a chord, I tried all the different notes in the pentatonic scale pattern to see which ones would sound good on the chord or as a note to end the lick on. I guess this is partly also a matter of taste, but it would give me a bit more direction when I would be improvising the next time. To think more about the notes that you're playing and especially the one, the, the note that you want to end your lick on. And having just a few counts to play your lick also helps. It makes sure that the licks are short and it gives you an opportunity to further develop like a certain idea. But of course I also fell into the trap of just having many different ideas that don't sound good together instead of developing one further. And I also had to remind myself that not every 16th note space needs to be filled with a note. To solve this, I thought it would be interesting to improvise really with the idea of figuring out a new lick. To really pay attention to what you are playing and what sounds good. Then if something sounds good, I can write it down and then I could link these ideas together. So let's see what that would sound like. Thank you. 
So I thought this was a really cool lesson. And although stitching all these uh, different ideas together doesn't sound like true improvising, I don't think it's wrong. I have the suspicion that good improvising is born out of a lot of experimentation and experience. Experiencing what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. Mindfully playing the notes that will form a lick. Playing all these things together that you figured out on your own earlier. So not necessarily just improvising something completely out of nowhere on the spot. And that when you're experimenting with all these chords and the scale shapes, that at a certain moment you will intuitively know what will sound good, just based on your experience playing these ideas before. Hopefully the randomness of beginners improvising will then at a certain moment vanish. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Let's review it at a later stage. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Mm -hmm.